So welcome everybody. Um, my name's Rob Case. I'm from Randall and Payne uh, Chartered Accountants and Tax Advisors in Cheltenham. Um, we do quite a bit of work with George. George, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, so my name's George. I run Move Estate Agents with a company with a bright pink signs. Uh, we've got a branch in Cheltenham, Gloucester, and we're just about to open in Worcester. Uh, so we deal with residential sales and lettings. Uh, and we specialise in sourcing property investors' uh, properties for their portfolio. Fantastic. Um, so we wanted to do a little bit on property and perhaps the life cycle of a landlord. Um, so hopefully we can cover a little bit for most people who might be interested. So um, <clears throat> structure is a really important thing for us, uh, making sure that however people own their property, it's structured correctly for their tax positions. But why should why should people look at becoming a landlord and the type of things they need to consider? Yeah, no, good question. I think if we look at you know a case study of a normal investor who will come to me, um, tends to be they've either inherited a property, um, they're wanting to invest in a mixed risk portfolio per se, um, and they want bricks and mortar to be part of their investment strategy. Um, I think it's it's a relatively safe uh, vehicle to use, and there's lots of benefits for it. But the first thing I always recommend to any client who calls me and says, "George, I'd like to buy an investment property." I will ask that question about structure. And for me, I'm looking at making sure I'm looking after my client in the best way possible. So they need to have a solid structure in place um, and a, a property purchase vehicle per se um, to make sure they're tax efficient and make sure their end goal is achievable um, in, in that said vehicle. Um, and I think that's why I always send people over, over your way, Rob, because you give them sound advice um, and make sure that they've got that correct from the beginning. Because I think it's, a, I would imagine from your point of view, it's a lot easier to get it right first time around than have to try and fix it later on down the line. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, the, the uh, poss possibilities are endless, you know, the way that we can structure these things, family investment companies, having trusts involved to make them sure there's some legal security, but it's a lot easier to do it from the outset because transferring existing properties comes with all sorts of tax implications and that's where people need to take the advice you know yeah and um, i presume it depends on on their own income and and structure and if they're self-employed employed and um and all of that i presume yeah it's always always about making sure they achieve the goals that they want to for their family you know if it's passing on wealth to the next generation or whatever it might be so but i guess it's an important conversation for you to talk about yields and you know, the different types of properties that people might consider investing in. Exactly that. So, so you know, when a client comes to me, I will ask that exact question. What's what's the end goal? Is this a short, medium or long term investment? Because my advice to a client is going to be completely bespoke, depending on the answer. If somebody says I'm looking for, you know, something for the next five years or so, I'm going to advise that they go and buy something completely different to if they're buying for high yield. Um, if they're buying for high yield, I'm going to give them a completely different property type and property area um, because the capital growth will be slightly slower, um, but the yield will be better because it will be a, a you know, less capital investment outlay um, versus the rent that it's going to deliver. So um, yeah, it always, it always comes down to not buying your investment property with emotion or thinking, where would I, would I be happy to live there? Of course, there's a, you know, there's a part in making sure you're buying a lovely property, um, but at the end of the day, you're not going to live there. This is now a business. Um, and it's a lot easier to start afresh. Sometimes we'll have clients who will be emotionally attached to a property. Um, quite often, it's actually easy to sell that property, um, get your vehicle correct, um, and then buy something fresh that you're not emotionally attached to, because that obviously comes with its co complications. So the, the basic point is take good advice from people, make sure you're buying the right property and getting the structure right <clears throat> at the yeah. outset, and you'll do yourself well, and don't be afraid to pay for that. Exactly. And, and I mean, what, what I will literally say to every single buyer um, that, that comes to me, I will say, right, what, what's the goal? Long, medium or short term? First things first, have you got a decent accountant? They'll say, oh, yeah, I've got you know somebody I've used for years. I will then change that question to, are they property tax specialists? And the answer is never been no. Um, and there's from my limited knowledge, there's a lot, there's a big difference in an accountant versus a property tax specialist. And I, Robert, it's probably quite useful for you to break that down if you don't mind. It's, very, it's, a, it's a good question, actually, to be fair. So yeah, very often, well, actually, you don't have to be qualified to call yourself an accountant nowadays. So if you're completing tax returns or compliance documents regularly, then, then people think that they're qualified by experience. But 
actually the devil's in the details. So you need to make sure you've got people that are appropriately qualified to pick up those little nuances to make sure you don't fall into any traps. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. I mean, I guess the next point in the life cycle is actually about, you know, running your property, managing your property and those sorts of things. And from a tax perspective, from April 2024, we've got Making Tax Digital coming in. So there will be quarterly reporting of rental figures to HM Revenue and Customs, which is going to be a pretty significant change in the marketplace that we can help with. But, you know, I guess one of the things we get asked is why, why would we or why should we place our property with an agent like yourself? Um, much like accountants, there are agents and there are agents. Um, at Move, we're an ARLA registered, so property mark recognised company. So we have to work to a code of conduct. We have a ring fence client account um, and we do things properly. And we've been ARLA registered since the day we opened. Um, when you're looking for a managing agent, you're actually just looking for somebody to run a business for you, is the way I've always explained it to a client. You know, there's lots of lettings agents out there who can manage your property. Um, that's that's part of it. But the other part is someone like myself giving you solid advice, helping you source your properties, helping you make sure you've got the best buy, advising you on what to do to the property to refurbish it to get the best rent and attract the right tenant profile. That's that's what you get as an added value when you come to uh, come to a lettings agency, or you should do. Um, and we do pick up a lot of clients who don't get this sound advice. So I think it's strategy structure, but there's also a lot um, that we bring to the party. So we're regularly looking at rent increases, and at the moment we've you know over the last twelve months or so, uh, rents have gone up. I'm sure you've seen that national media, and. We've been actioning those for our landlords. We keep an eye on that. We make sure all of the legalities are followed. Um, and these days, there's a hell of a lot to, to, to think about. Um, you know, we take that weight off your shoulder, make sure you're fully compliant. Um, we, you know, October this year, we've got carbon monoxide changes coming in. We're just currently going through our portfolio to make sure uh, that all of our landlords are compliant and making a plan for that. So we worry about making sure you are safe and sound as a landlord, um, and we worry about maximising your investment. I think the way you should look at it is you're paying me a percentage of your rent. Um, so my job is to justify my cut by maximising your return. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, you could do it yourself. Um, there are lots of pitfalls to think about, and it's all OK in property management until something goes wrong. And that's where we earn our money. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great when you have a fantastic tenant who's been there for 10 years and looks after the property. But as soon as something goes wrong, that's where we really come into our own. I think you raised some good, good points there. You, what's good for today isn't necessarily good for tomorrow, is it? So keeping abreast of those kind of changes. I mean, we have it in the tax world. You talked about repairs and maintenance. Well, is it capital? Is it revenue? Can we reduce it off our income? Or is it actually more of a capital expenditure? And how does that fit? So... It's making sure that people are aware of those implications so they can make informed decisions about what they're doing. Yeah, and with regards to reporting, um, so we actually have a software where we allow our landlords to log in to the back end of, our, of the software we use all day long. You can go in there 24 hours a day, download your statements, par partially fill in your tax return as well. So that makes your life as easy as possible. You can download a CSV uh, a spreadsheet to send on to your accountant or your bookkeeper um, at any time you'd like without having to contact us. Um, lots of our large portfolio landlords love that because they can download everything in one place rather than having to trawl through um, statements. I'm sure their accountants love it as well. So rather than getting a big pile of statements, they can just have a, a spreadsheet with everything on. Um, there's no extra charge for that. Um, and that's something that would save you a lot of time. Um, and I think from a portfolio point of view, uh, we at Move regularly review your portfolio. So I'll have quarterly meetings with my larger clients. Uh, we'll go through their portfolio, what's working, what's not working, what might we want to offload because the market's changing. So for example, recently we've been offloading lots of HMO properties um, and turning them into student lets um, in certain areas. So Gloucester, that's a really good market. So we regularly look at portfolios and make sure we're sweating them as much as we possibly can. Well, you've brought us onto the next section quite nicely, which I guess is about uh, landlord life cycle and exit, actually choosing when to come out of the market. And uh, the market's been quite buoyant recently. Um, so I think we're certainly seeing a few of the older generations perhaps looking to crystallise on that value and, and get out of the market. Um, obviously, there are tax consequences with capital gains in selling properties uh, and the reporting of such for individuals. But uh, what, what's, have you got any views? Yeah, I, if I'm totally honest, we don't really have any landlords that offload their properties. Over the last 
year or two, we've had a few who have contacted us and said, George, if I'm looking to sell, when should I sell? And my answer is, if you look at this in the next five years, probably around about now. Um, we are at the top of said market. Um, whether or not that crumbles, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, but again, it, it's it's then looking at that strategy for offloading the properties. Do you sell one a year? Um, are you taking into account early redemption charges um, and obviously all the tax implications as well? Because you know, if you if you've got an early redemption charge, that might be one, two, three, or four percent. Um, you know, that's more than you pay an estate agent to sell the property. So you've got to put all these things into your equation. And again, that comes back to making sure you have a property tax advisor behind the scenes giving you that advice, because that's not my domain. I, I don't know my landlord's intricate finances. Um, so I think making sure you've got your ducks in a row and you're looking probably five to 10 years ahead um, is, is what you need to be doing as a, as a landlord. Yeah, it's definitely all about planning you know you want to make sure the timing's right are you utilizing your allowances can you use your wife's allowance now are their incomes low at certain points that means that you'll be paying less tax as a result it's all about planning that so that's fantastic brilliant thanks george my pleasure thanks uh, i think that's been a, a good useful summary and of course if people want to get in touch with you at move and they google you they'll find you and likewise us with randall and Payne. so thanks very much for your time my pleasure thanks Rob.